G'day folks, Robin Jack here. This week's video is going to be a bit of a recap on what happened to the dams after the rain event we had last week. So I thought we'd start on the good news and that is we still have water not only in what we're calling the lily pad dam, even though they're not all lily pads, and also the large dam or the new dam. Now the damage is quite significant. I'll give you a bit of a look at the spillway into the new dam. And as you can see, there are a lot of rocks that have been uncovered that we use to basically construct this wall or possibly a um, breach in the past. There is a seep hole down there, which was here the first night we moved in. Uh, it was a rainy night and obviously formed. We didn't notice it during any of our inspections or visits prior. There is a tunnel that runs pretty much all under there as well and opens up into this canyon where you can see more rocks have been used in the construction of the wall. More on that later. And the water level has gone down quite significantly. I can tell you that there is a fair amount of earth between there and there. So I don't think we're going to lose much more water level in this dam at this point, even if we do have some rain over the next couple of days, which isn't really forecast in large amounts anyway. So for now, the lily pad dam is safe. Uh, just quickly, the polymer that I bought to put in this dam really wasn't suited for the issue that we have, which is basically a breach due to what I'm thinking is faulty construction. Uh, it's more for soil types that aren't really good at holding water. So not something I would use here. In fact, Daniel um, told me when he emailed me, he hurriedly emailed me and said, please don't use that stuff. Uh, let me see the dams first and I actually did soil tests on his request as well which I think I showed in the last video. Now over at the other dam we have had some significant erosion especially up here where a lot of the water enters the dam. This area here has eroded quite substantially. Uh, one good thing about it I suppose is we can actually see the makeup of the soil a lot better. So we do know there's very rich soil um, in certain parts of this paddock. Other parts of the paddock, it looks like bare sandy loam. Um, Jack, not too close, buddy. Bianca will have my hide. Um, yeah, so there, there, is, there is decent soil under the ground. Once we get to it, uh, there's just patches like at the, the top of that dam there and here that are rather bare that we were making us question, you know, what the quality of the soil was all through the paddock. But as Bianca pointed out, they could be remnants from repair work or when the dam was actually put in because at the top of the uh, dam wall on the other dams, there's that same bare patch of earth. So as to how we're going to deal with this washout, not 100% sure. Uh, I did have some ideas before when it was a lot smaller, but we're going to wait for Daniel to come and give us a couple of ideas on design and how we can get the water flowing into the dams a lot easier. Uh, for all we know, we might end up with swales here redirecting the water into another point in the dam where it can enter without it doing much damage to the wall. Uh, we'll go and have a look at the dam wall for this one. Are you gonna come join us, Jack Jack? Come, come. Good boy. So we're at the dam wall here and this dam didn't fail where we thought it would, which was around that corner over there at the spillway. It actually failed where there looks to be a root system that has been placed in the dam wall during its construction, something that's been bulldozed in. It looks like it's gone under the edge of that log there and created a bit of a tunnel uh, down through there, through the dam wall. Not only that, we think that the logs used here to create a bit of a dam wall, and there's also a sheet of metal of some description down in there, has caused a breach between this little temporary dam that was just a seasonal one and this large dam here. So what we have is water running through, probably under the ground here somewhere, and then also meeting up and running out down over there. Um, I'm going to walk across here very gingerly. So the water is coming out just down in there. That is the only track of water we can find. It's still running now as there's a little bit of water still running in uh, to the top of this dam system. And it was flowing out through a small hole behind that tuft of grass, which has now opened up into a large hole. So somewhere under here, we have a tunnel that goes from there into this little water bottle here, body here, and also must meet up with this tunnel here and go out into the wilds, basically, uh, down to that little dam down in there. So Daniel didn't make it out here this week. Uh, we've had to postpone for a couple of weeks, so he'll be out, I think, in a couple of Fridays' time. Uh, 
basically we were flooded in. We had over a metre or three foot of water over our little bridge for a couple of days, kept fluctuating up and down as we had the storms um, roll through, not necessarily here, but more upstream. Just one of those things, better to postpone it than have him drive all the way here and find he can't drive through. When he does arrive though, he has said that I can film bits and pieces and I will be doing a video showing um, what his suggested fixes are for the place. We may not necessarily be using him as the um, engineer on the earthworks itself, mainly because uh, travel from where he's based in Brisbane up here is, it would be quite XE diesel wise. So we'll just have to see what sort of charges are involved. Uh, basically getting Daniel here, it was a toss up. Do we buy a ride on lawnmower or do we get Daniel out here to give us a few ideas about how we can get the water moving properly on the property? So at the moment I'm still using the line trimmer to mow all the grass around the house so we can see where we're treading. And um, yeah, we'll just have to save up a few pennies down the road for that. And yeah, I just thought it was far more important to get Daniel out here or any expert out here who can help us with uh, redirecting the water and getting this place set up properly. Uh, as for the, any concern about these dams washing out, I have read the comments, sorry I haven't gone back to them yet. Uh, any concerns about these dams just giving way and flooding downstream is not a concern with the way that I can see the erosion at the moment and other people have agreed with me. The dam walls won't fail in one go and you know will wash away people's houses or anything like that downstream. Uh, a, because there is no one that lives on the creek downstream. This opens up into the Isis River. And B, there just really isn't enough water in these dams. They may look rather large, but in, in reality, they really don't hold as many megalitres as would need um, to cause that sort of an, the, of an event downstream. So no real concerns there. A few people have given us tips about throwing sandbags in and other bits and pieces. I'm really not going to do the trick this time around because I have a feeling it's the way these dam walls are being constructed. Um, yeah, I, I think we're going to have to rethink whether we actually want this large dam here for a start or whether we could do something else here, shape the earth differently so it doesn't erode from the top side as well as this side here that I'm standing on and whether we just concentrate on maybe fixing the lily pad dam, might even be able to expand it a bit, um, create a slightly large dam by moving the dam wall down into this dam. We just don't know yet. There's actually a few other dams we want him to look at or one in particular and one spot where we think we could probably do with a new dam going in so we've got him for half a day and we'll, we'll pick his brains about that not only that he's a permaculture designer as well so we can yeah pick his brain about a couple of ideas around the house so we really are looking forward to have Daniel and his partner come up here and have the consultation and also looking forward to sharing with you folks uh, what we find out as it may help you in your own circumstances hopefully you don't have dams falling down but just give you a few ideas you can play around with on your own farm so pretty much all done Jack Jack we're done we can go back to the house come on so yeah that's pretty much all where we're up to with the rain uh, the small flood and the dams um, I can let you know that I have been busy I think I mentioned before with the snippering uh, yeah we've pretty much all done all around the house and I've been tidying up bits and pieces out of the chook pen as well uh, we're pretty sure the chook pen is one of the first things we're going to fix uh, once we get a bit more time I'm back off down to Ipswich I'll be down in Ipswich while you folks are watching this and Bianca and Jack will be on the farm holding down the fort and possibly fishing in that dam there trying to work out what sort of fish we're seeing swim around at night take the bugs so we'll pretty much all leave it there folks I'll go upstairs empty out the trailer and get ready for the trip down south guess what I'll be whippersnippering down there as well hooray so uh, yeah, I do hope you're enjoying these little farm catch-up videos and um, just a bit of a heads up for you folks who may be interested in aquaponics. I do aquaponics consultations. I'm still doing a number of them. I've done a couple this week. So if you want to learn more about them, there'll be a little button that pops up at the end of the screen here and you can go see what that's all about. We also have our store where we sell a few bits and pieces aquaponics wise and also some nutcrackers and kelp fertilizer for aquaponics as well as your soil gardens. And I also do have an aquaponics beginners course for anyone who is interested in learning how to do aquaponics. Links for those down below as well as our affiliate links. Uh, but that's enough of me spruiking as well. I, I do have to pay the bills somehow. I hope you folks understand. And yeah, I'll leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy. And Bianca and I will catch you in the next video, hopefully next weekend. Cheers, folks, and have a top one. So Bianca has just picked up. We have tiny baby fish down in there swimming against the current 
and we have surface debris coming over to this side of the dam as well. So just a little bit of an addition to the end of this video. The plot thickens. I brought the endoscopy cam down to have a look under there, see what sort of a uh, hole has been created because I didn't want to stick my head under there, obviously. It could collapse. And I came up with a bit of a surprise. Um, there's actually a culvert that runs from there over to here, which is what that little bit of metal down there is, uh, that the owner neglected to tell us about. Not only that, this was covered up by soil. So yeah, the plot thickens. I'll give you more on this in the next video when we come back with Daniel and have a look. So that's going to be in a couple of weeks time when we look at the dam again. Hopefully that little hole over there uh, won't be too big of an issue. And maybe we could do some work over there down the line and create a little bit of an excess spillway over there. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting that plot turn. Have a good one, folks.